Mark Rogers TV back with you trying to knock out as many bowl previews as is humanly possible. So we've got a Music City Bowl matching the ACC against the ACC against the SEC with the ACC actually faring pretty well against uh, what appears to be the more dominant conference in recent years. We got Texas A&M taking on Louisville. We bring in uh, Tony Saracusa from Last Word on Sports to help us Break it down. Tony, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let's dive right into the obvious storyline, and it's the Texas A&M quarterback situation or lack of a quarterback situation at this point. Yeah, it, it, it is complete chaos. I mean, you know, to have lost two quarterbacks in, in, in one season, you know, two starters in one season, Kyler Murray has now officially transferred, and even through that whole process, it was chaos. He missed practice on Wednesday, and Kevin Sumlin went public saying he was just sick. He was ill. He wasn't feeling well. So I told him to go home. It was really nothing more than that. And it turns out that that was completely untrue. It turns out that Murray and his parents had a meeting with Sumlin on Tuesday night um, and that they were very unhappy. Murray has wanted to play baseball. He's been playing baseball for Texas A&M. That was part of the agreement when he went to A&M that he could also play baseball during the spring. And the reports are that during during this time right now, the coaches told Murray, we don't want you playing baseball in the spring. We want you here for spring practice. And it didn't sit well with Murray or his family because, according to them, the coaching staff had said it was all right. It was fine. It was always part of the plan when Murray signed his national letter of intent with A&M. And so now they're changing their tunes now that because Kyle Allen is gone, Murray is the starter for the foreseeable future. And so... They said, well, then forget it. We're, we're out, too. So he's lost Kyle Allen. He's lost Kyler Murray. You know, he's going to be starting Jake Hubenack at quarterback, which anyone who follows college football as religiously as you and I do, even we don't know who Josh Hubenack is because the kid's thrown 27 passes the entire season, all in mop-up duty. Um, someone's got problems. He's got some really serious problems with his quarterback situation and team chemistry and holding it together right as the bowl season is starting. The timing couldn't be worse for him. It's funny, Tony, because uh, Kevin Sumlin showed up at College Station coming from Houston as a hot commodity among the coaching ranks because he both recruits and develops quarterbacks. He did it at Houston. He had Johnny Manziel. Kenny Hill turned in a fabulous three- or four-game stretch to start off last season where there was Heisman talk, and then all of a sudden he's not the guy – Kyle Allen, though, Kyler Murray, they've got four and five star recruits seemingly all over the place. Like they've got too much at quarterback that Kevin someone's that great of a recruiter that he draws in quarterbacks, even when he's got seemingly guys in place for the next few years and owns the state of Texas in recruiting. His recruiting classes have been phenomenal, but he's not produced yet on the field. He's got another eight and four campaign following up an eight and five season that seems to have been where he's kind of landed in SEC seedings over the last couple of years. So the the shine may be coming off Kevin Sumlin just, just a bit here. Right. Well, look, part of the big move for AM, part of the recruiting pitch was moving to the SEC. You're going to play the big time teams on the big time stage on national TV every week. And, you know, for AM, they were going to get a lot more revenue this way. It was a great recruiting pitch for Sumlin. And as you point out, he's had some phenomenal recruiting classes, but he's got extraordinary team dysfunction right now. He's got extraordinary chemistry problems within the program right now. And, and you can't escape that. In this day and age where you and I are sitting here doing, doing this broadcast and it's going to go out all over the digital media world and you've got people talking about it all the time, he's now got, re he's now got people who he's recruited well, that are decommitting by the day. He's got three quarterbacks that he's burned through in two seasons, all of whom are gone from the program completely. I, I think the shine is well beyond gone on Kevin Sumlin. I, I, I think that he's got a lot of problems. And frankly, I think he's got his hands full with this matchup against Louisville. And it's, it's a real problem for him. Tony, uh, at the beginning of the season, I, looked at Texas A&M as having the deepest wide receiver core in college football with Josh Reynolds, who caught 14 touchdowns last year, Ricky Seals Jones, Speedy Noyle. I didn't even account for Christian right. Kirk, who has completely taken the SEC by storm, was voted uh, all SEC 
uh, the SEC Rookie of the Year, Freshman of the Year by the coaches. He caught 70 balls, returned two punts for touchdowns. Right. They're loaded as long as they can get the football to these guys and they can rely on Trey Carson out of the backfield a thousand yard back. Well, we hadn't even touched on that now. Speedy and Oil has been suspended for the game. Oh, and we we don't even know what the what the problem was, but it's significant enough. Not only has he been suspended for this game, but for the season opener at home against UCLA next year. And we don't know what the infraction was. It was the it was the stereotypical violation of team rules <laughs> what you know gives someone plenty of latitude so you know and, and again it's a matter of like you said they're deep at wide receiver and Noyle statistically was not their best wide receiver because he's been well surpassed by Christian Kirk but nonetheless it takes away you're already missing your starting quarterback or two of your starting quarterbacks if you want to still include Kyle Allen and now you're missing one of your wide receiver weapons for a kid who has only thrown the ball 27 times all season. Again, you got your hands full. We don't know what Noyle did, but he is definitively out for this game. The quarterback situation we've been talking about for the last five minutes, if this was three months ago and we were going into the season opener, we could have displaced the teams and we would have been talking about Louisville because they didn't know who to start a quarterback. They had like three or four quarterbacks running around and no established starter. They started Reggie Bonifant in the opener against Auburn, but they really landed on Lamar Jackson, a freshman who certainly had his rough stretches, isn't a polished passer from the pocket, but makes some plays, and he's a dynamic runner, and and he's pretty much established himself. Yeah, Jackson is a dual threat, and it's funny that we use the term dual threat. It's become kind of generic. He runs the ball well. He throws the ball well. He's not great at either, but he's good enough at either that he's going to stretch the defense Louisville's challenge with with the offense has been pass protection on their offensive line they're not particularly good at it so as a result they've learned to move the pocket a lot for Jackson put him out on the run put him out on a sprint out not ask him to throw the ball 60 yards downfield on a sprint out but hit that 20 to 25 yard intermediate pass downfield on the sprint out but also give him the option to just tuck it and run and, and he is good enough at both to, to make that a viable offensive plan now. Yeah, it's got to be driving uh, Bobby Petrino a bit nuts that he can't throw the ball as efficiently as he would like. That's where he hangs his hat is on the passing game and developing quarterbacks and wide receivers and having an intricate passing game. But he's had to scrap it and completely go with a athlete at quarterback who's rough throwing the ball 56%. Uh, let's see, he's got uh, 10 TDs and eight picks. Uh, Kyle Bolin's his backup, but uh, they got to go with Jackson, and, and he runs the ball relatively well, as you mentioned. Nine rushing touchdowns of Brandon Radcliffe, the kid out of the backfield that gets the ball most of the time at the running back position, ran for a little over 507 TDs. Then they got just a number of wide receivers, uh, none who really stand out, basically because they don't have the guy to deliver the ball. You got uh, James Staples, James Quick, Jalen Smith, all around 35 catches. Uh, I don't know if you've caught this Louisville team this year, but they jump into the ACC last year. They had a nice season at 9-4, and four, but uh, they've kind of settled back and not really challenged Clemson and Florida State as many expected that they would. Yeah, I think I think the, the preseason thought on them was much more significant than the reality that what we're seeing. And as you pointed out, it took them a while to settle in on the quarterback position. And then even once they named Jackson the quarterback, they still kind of really held their cards, no pun intended, close to the chest in that, you know, I mean, he's only thrown 211 passes the entire season. So they're not asking a lot out of their offense. I mean, you know, he's rushed the ball 141 times. You pointed out his touchdowns rushing and his touchdowns throwing the ball, but they're not asking a lot out of him. And so as a result, while they have talent, a wide receiver, you're not seeing a lot of offensive stats piled up uh, by, by any one individual on that team because Jackson's not yet at a point where, where he can make the quick decisions like that in the pocket and go to a second or third receiver downfield. You know, Tony, amongst those top five recruiting classes that we discussed with Texas A&M over the past few years, much of that has come on defense, and it hasn't come to fruition on the field and forming into a top-caliber SEC defense, but they were much better this year. In the past, it was almost like they supplanted a Big 12 defense, took it to the SEC, and tried to play, and there was still that mindset that 
guys were running around in the secondary, loose wide receivers, blown coverages, missed tackles, not showing a real desire to tackle. And it's just a different tenacity on defense playing in the SEC. But this season, a little bit better. Of course, Miles Garrett is the stud on this uh, defense from the uh, end position who really comes off the edge quickly and puts pressure on the quarterback. Well, you're right about that, and and A and M has has good speed on the outside on both sides, uh, defensive ends and the outside linebacker positions. They've got a lot of team speed, so they're able to blitz. They're able to throw different coverage packages at you. Uh, they're able to throw different schemes at you, which against a Louisville team with a quarterback who is still trying to figure out if he's a runner, a passer, or some semblance of both, could lend to a lot of confusion for for a young quarterback like Louisville has. Tony Syracuse is joining us from Last Word on Sports. Tony, when I saw the bull lineup come out and saw this game, I was automatically going to check off Texas A&M. SEC team that held up pretty right. well against better competition, beat Mississippi State and Arkansas. But considering this quarterback situation, I'm going to have to think on this one for a little while. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know what? I'm with you. I, I thought it was an easy win for A&M. They're, they're, while they're not where Sumlin should be or wants to be based on his recruiting classes, because of the difficulty of the schedule, the challenge of the SEC West, 8-4 and four was respectable enough to beat a Louisville team that has underperformed. The, the, but the challenge now is, look, Louisville's got a good defense. They're ranked 14th in the nation, and they're giving up 306 yards a game. So, They've got a good defense, and now, as you point out, as we've talked about, with the chaos at quarterback for for Texas A&M, I, I've already gone past rethinking it, and I think Louisville wins a close game. All right, Tony Syracuse from Last Word on Sports. Uh, the site does a tremendous job uh, across the board, but specifically with Thank college you. football. Tony, before Thank we you. let you go, what are you guys working on these days? Well, you know, we've got we've got every bowl game being covered. We've got previews that are already up, started started posting last night on this weekend's bowl games. No matter how big or small the bowl game is, we're there covering it. So we've got a lot of previews coming up. And uh, as as any college football fanatic knows, there is no downtime because as soon as we're through the bowl games, we are knee deep into the recruiting season. And we will have a lot of coverage leading up to that first Wednesday in February, National Letter of Intent Day. So we are around the calendar working on about 20 things at one time. And you guys are much like me. I know that once the last game's played, in addition to recruiting, I like to boil down all the numbers, all the metrics, all the results from the season and say, okay, let's look at it. Let's see who played the best uh, amongst these Power Five conferences and try to sort it out. So I will be working on, on that one as well. Tony, we appreciate the time. Mark, always glad to be with you. Take care.